chapter 13, verse 3. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. And so today I begin a new series. And by the way, I know I've got one more sermon to go on that old series. But until my mama sits in that chair, I will not preach that last sermon on that series. I know what I'm doing, all right? Today I begin a new series entitled More on Samson's Story. And today I minister from the sermon topic, a season of signs God is about to show up. A season of signs God is about to show up. Our God is a God of signs and seasons. Such signs and seasons are not for the sake of God, but they are for our sake. You see, God operates outside of time in a space called eternity. Yet God steps into our mandated space of time in any given season in order to bring about change. As humans, we feel the weather change and the temperature drops from the 70s and 80s to the mid 60s and below. When we feel this, we know that the season has changed and we address it by dressing differently. <laughs> Somebody gonna get something already. When the season shifts, you gotta dress differently. <laughs> ah, in the spirit realm, God does the very same thing. God looks at what is going on in the earth and when the temperature or the nature of things change drastically, he steps in to bring about the change he desires to see. Let's look at some times in the Bible when God stepped in to bring about change because, because things were off. It was a time of change. In the very beginning, there was darkness and chaos and God stepped in to bring light. What about in Genesis when the perfect utopia called the Garden of Eden was deviled by Lucifer? God stepped in and cleaned out the garden by expelling Adam and Eve from that place. Then when the earth was continually evil and man did what was right in their own eyes, God cleansed the earth by sending rain. There was a time when God sent Moses to deliver his people from bondage because they had cried unto him for deliverance. God shifted the atmosphere on the earth when he allowed Joseph to be betrayed by his brothers so that he could, Joseph, end up in Potiphar's house, prison, and then in the palace so that he could turn around and save those very brothers and their families from starvation. Overall, in the word of God, when God desires to change a spiritual season, he sends in a certain man or a certain woman to initiate it. God has never been bereft of a human vessel when he desires to shift a season. Anytime God needs the earth to experience a divine shift, he orders that there be in existence, one who is able to bring about, initiate the beginning of the shift. And one of the questions that you must ask is, can God use me to change the time or the season? You know, do I want it to say mo, say mo? Am I satisfied with running around the mulberry bush? Am I just content that the same old thing I complained about last year, same old, you know, can God use me to shift things? One, one thing I know is that when God is going to use someone in a major way to cause them to be a shifter of an atmosphere, that the first shift that has to happen is a shift within. you got to make up your mind. It's going to be different. My God, even when I don't want it to be different, because I know it must be different. It is going to be. Sometimes, sometimes I hear it, Holy Ghost, you've got to put yourself in a divine timeout. Time out. For me in doing my nonsense. Time out for me 
and doing what I want because I want to be used of God. Well, in our text today, it's time for another change of seasons. The signs are there and God is about to show up. God is about to interrupt, I love it, the current season to bring about a new season. Huh? He is about, somebody in here, he is about to interrupt your life. He is about to cause that your life experience a shifting, a change that even you were not aware could happen. So follow me in looking at this example of how God does what he does as I deal with the following three points. Point number one, a season of 40 years. A season of 40 years. Point two, a season of family years. A season of family years. And then point number three, a season of formula years. <laughs> a season of formula years. So let's deal with it here. Point number one, a season of 40 years. Verse 13, it says, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. 40 years, folks. Listen, one minute the Israelites wanted to be married to God and obey him. And then the next season, they wanted other nations and what other nations had at the expense of their unique relationship with God. Don't tell me that the Bible is not relevant. Don't tell me that the Bible is not being played out right before our eyes. There are many, many, many in a place in a building called church today, could be somebody here, that you're not really serious about being connected to God with a unique relationship. You're just used to being in a space and a place. You're sitting in church divorced from God. Oh, sitting in church experiencing a separation, an illegal separation. Oh, my, 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 my. Listen here. Each time they separated from God, breaking covenant with God, God stepped back and let their enemies come and right. capture them, right. taking them into bondage. Right. Why you can't praise God? Why you can't sing songs? Why you can't do the Holy Ghost dance? Somebody done kidnap you. Kidnap you in the house of God. Kidnap your voice. Kidnap your hands. Kidnap your feet. Can't do what you ought to do. And, and even when you see yourself, you set it up. I'm going to do this church. And come. This weekend, I'm going to do what I need to be doing. I'm got it. By the time you get in the house of God, the devil done took a reservation on your lap. And scheduled that from 11 a.m. till about 1.15, 1 1.16, 1 that he sit on your lap. But I'm here to tell you, I understood from my childhood that even when I make a mistake, even when I go astray, I am a child of God, and I will command the atmosphere. I will cause a shift to occur in my own life. Ain't no preacher going to have to say anything to me. Ain't nobody going to have to lay hands and lay me out. I know who I am. And even when I go astray, I can call to remembrance that I've got a God who forgives. He's a forgiver. He's a forgiver. Come on now. You know, how many times is there out there a false narrative against God's word? You know, you can do all you want against God's word and you'll be okay. Because God loves. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, let me help you out. You can be married to somebody and you are going to say, because I know I ain't going to say it. Oh, you can go around and sleep, out, sleep with other people, take other people out on dates and I'll be fine. You whoop at you. Mm -hmm. ah. No, 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 no. And so if that's, that's how it is in the natural, how much more in the spirit? Don't you go cheating on God. Listen, when you cut against God's word, you will get cut in some way. Preacher, uh, uh, you cut against God's word, he can cut your praise. He can cut you. He can cut your backside. <laughs> ah, 
I'm in the word, I'm in the word. God allows the children of Israel to feel the consequences of their choices for 40 years. 40 years! I didn't say four days, four weeks, four months. I said 40 years. Not just a single man or a single woman, but the nation. You got to get a picture of that. The little children that were just born, all they experienced for the first 40 years was bondage because their parents acted the fool. I drive church today, saw people running. I said, that means the children are learning that they can run. Now, I gave to some dog because I'm, I'm always thinking. I said, well, you know what, Maria? They're of a certain age. They probably, you know, they're going to run, but at least they know God because they went to, to, to Sunday school. But that children ain't going to know Sunday school because who's taking them? You, you want Bermuda to be saved? This place is going to experience more wickedness. I'm telling you. Parents, children here and play Xbox. Learning to kill people on TV, on this little screen thing. And yet you want them to go to school and behave themselves. Yeah. That's, that's God cutting your backside yeah. for forgetting them. Yeah. That, that's what it is. How much the more we that are here heed to the word of God. See, y'all you don't like me. You, you, you wish I had taken another week in, in Boston, huh? Hmm? Hmm? But I'm here to tell you, I, I am a shepherd. I got to give an account for your soul. My God, I don't have to give a come for your spirit, you know. It's that soul ram, wishy, washy, in, out, up, down. What in the world? Your children are going to learn to do what you show them. 40 years. Well, the Bible uses 40, hear me, hear me, to relate a message to the reader. It's a time of testing, trials, or probation. God said to the apple of his eye. God said to his beloved people. God said to the nation of Israel, chosen far and apart from every other people. He said, you're going on probation. Watch this. I have a standard. Oh, no, not a standard. He cursed word in the local church. No, just come at your eye. Do what you want. Do what you want. Do what? God says, you will be delivered to your flesh. God says, you really want to do? Let me tell you, let me tell you something I know, not from experience. I know that if you're not married and you want to have sex, God actually lets you have sex. God, God to like come in the room or whatever and go. God doesn't do that. You know, if y'all smoking, he don't come out of heaven with a divine horse and go, shh, put his place smoke out. He doesn't do all that stuff. He lets you experience your own bondage of choice. God's word is about deliverance and freedom. And if you choose the opposite, he says, you're going to feel it. This is what he told his people. Oh, yeah, old school. In other words, for Israel, God, God really wants you to, now this is the part, he really wants you to learn the lesson so that you can truly be delivered. If, if, if help him out, semen. If you stop the sinning, but you really still want to do it, you ain't delivered. You ain't delivered. If you stop the sinning, you literally, you stop it. You stop doing it. But you're thinking about it, you ain't delivered. That bad boy, demonic spirit going to come right back at you. Just going to park out somewhere waiting for you, waiting for you. That's why you've got to prove, you've got to prove whatever. Bitter spirit, backbiting spirit, whatever it is, you've got to prove it this week that you've actually been delivered from it. That's why we come to church, to be empowered to actually repent. Not go back to the vomit. I never seen anybody here lick up vomit. But the Bible says that your sin is as vomit. And when you don't, when you don't, when you refuse to go back, that makes sense. But when you go back to it, all I see, dog, I'm going back to the vomit. Back to the vomit. Yes. Right back. 
Delicious. Vomit! My God. So God, he, he allows his people to be in bondage for 40 years so that they really can learn, I don't want to go back. Yeah. Now, 246 times in the Bible, God uses the number 40 to teach us what they should have learned so that we could choose to avoid their mistakes. How about that? Romans 15 and 4, it reads, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. I have hope that as I preach this word, that somebody's going to say, you know what? I actually believe that word. I won't go and do it. I, I won't do it. Listen, look to your neighbor and tell them, learn the lesson. <laughs> learn the lesson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Learn the lesson. If not, you will receive a detention or retention to learn the lesson again. Learn the lesson so that you do not become the next lesson. Learn the lesson so that you suffer less and grow more. You got to learn your lesson. Amen. Just learn the lesson. Israel went through 40 years, and, and God, it would seem, he had now, yes, he had seen their sign. He had seen the signs of them crying out to him that it was now time to bring them out. You know, mothers, you put their child in their room, they cry, and they scream, scream, cry. When they finally shut up is when you say, okay, time for them to come out. We kind of have the reverse of that. God hears them crying. How you be God's people, and you're crying out of bondage? God hears that and says, ah, they're finally ready. God, now he is about to release his, watch this, pre-planned plan. God had a plan before you got in bondage. The pre-planned plan of deliverance for his people takes me to point number two, a season of family years. One of the signs that God is about to do something supernatural is that there will always be a season or state of emptiness. That's the part that's tough right there. That's tough. Have you ever been down to your last and God came through? Woo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have your, have your cabinets ever been empty and God sent someone by with food? Mm -hmm. Have you ever thrown in the towel only to experience a sudden blessing? Such, such examples speak to God's God way of handling are no way situations. Hmm. So you really want to ask yourself, do I really want to experience a no way situation? Do I really want to subject my humanity to a time of emptiness? See, 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 we don't like that. We're uncomfortable. We don't understand. That's a stretching moment. That's a moment, hey, nothing there. Well, God is here. Hmm? When we reach our no way, we are at our empty place, and God is about to do something that only he can do. What you going to do with empty? What are, what you going to do? Don't tell me you're going to fill it, because if you could fill it, it wouldn't be empty. <laughs> I, I, I heard somebody say, oh, Pastor, pass am going to fill that up by the Holy Ghost. You ain't filling it up. It's empty. <laughs> it's empty. At this point, Think of Israel. Israel is void or empty of authority. See, it's more than walking in power. Now you got to walk in authority. After 40 years, they are empty, now this is good, of themselves. Yeah? As they are now crying out for deliverance. God so orders it that while his personal people a personal family is on E, empty, that there is a particular family who are also on E, empty. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Because God always has to have an example in front of us. 
The reason that I have confidence, a part of the reason why I have confidence in who God is and what he can do, because I remember mothers of Zion in the church and how they testified about what God did. That's why it's important to have testimonies. Some of the young people think that, oh, what they've been through, never nah, in the whole like, entire existence of earth has anybody been through what they've been through. <laughs> Sit down and talk to somebody. <laughs> Sometimes the very ones that you see shouting the most, the ones that you see clapping the most, been through more than you could shake a stick at. Amen. Huh? So God, let's, let's read about what God now has us to look at. The people are empty and crying. They finally reached that place. I got something for you, got something for you. Because you know we're talking about Samson, right? Yeah. So you got this family. They're empty. Right? No children. I'm going to teach you good in a minute. But I, I need you to say this. This is beautiful, y'all. As long as Israel was still full of Israel, this family would not have. It was when they were finally empty and wanted to be full of God that God says, I'll now take the empty situation and fill it up. I'm going to, I, can it be church? Can it be Shekinah Worship Center that God is waiting for the church to cry out? I'm tired of being empty. I'm tired of being full of me. I'm tired of having it my way. I'm tired of seeking those things that you don't approve of. And when we empty ourselves, then God will cause the world to take note of the church and to say, I want to go into that place. But when the church is full of the world and looks like the world, then the world doesn't have anything to desire because they say, I've got what you've got. But I want a holy church. I want a sanctified church. I want a church that longs to hear the heartbeat of God. I want a church that understands uh, that except God bless me, uh, except you bless my soul, uh, except you bless me, God, uh, I will not be satisfied. You can have the world, but give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. That's, that's old school, don't you know? Shaman, I say, I'm a poor, poor rich man. Oh, I'm a poor, poor rich man. That's what it meant. Mm -hmm. Can't you see what really happened to me? Look at the spiritual part. I'm a millionaire. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Though I am poor, hey, I got a lot more than many rich folk that I know. I've got a home in the sky that money can buy. I'm a poor, poor rich man. See, that's, that was one of those up the ramp, down the ramp songs. Lord have mercy. I'll see, I'll see the um, ladies auxiliary choir in their white with pink, I think, something. Oh, I'll just be little watching them just go. I'm a poor, poor. Then they're like, Jesus, Lord have mercy. My God. But, but, but I know what they're singing about. I know what they sang about. I, I've got some money. I, I live in a beautiful country. I, I live in a wealthy country. Uh, but somehow I see her as poor because she has traded in the world. She has taken up the world. She has let go of the kingdom, let go of Jesus. But I still feel rich, y'all. I feel wealthy. I feel full of the goodness of God. Because I tell you what, I decided a long time ago, I'm not going to turn back now. Oh, no, I can't. Can't turn around. Now. Oh no, I can't, can't turn around now. For the Lord watches right both day and night. Ooh, oh, I can't. <laughs> See that? I've been around a long time. That's why I want to have people that have the same passion that I've been brought up on, <laughs> that understand <laughs> that this Christian walk. <laughs> Church is not about coming church on a Sunday. It's not about being able to sing and dance. It's about being connected to God and having a relationship with him that is so personal, that is so powerful, it's so prophetical that you delight in his presence, that no matter what, you know you've got to be in the house of God. I work for the man all week, but 
now I need to go to the man that created mankind. Hiya! So, for an empty people that finally realize they're empty, he now can move on this woman's womb. I can't go into it, but I keep on thinking about it. The Bible says we'll read it. Okay, let me read it. Let me read it. Verses 2 and 3. Watch, watch. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. So, so watch this, watch this. Well, first of all, she had to have a son. I'll drop that in because that's the time they lived in. If, they were, if we were talking about the 21st century, 2019, they would have said, dog will have a child. But now we're in that culture, so they're going to have a son. So here's what, they, here's what it says in both of them. It says, you're barren and bear not. Don't miss it. It means you're barren. They're calling it two different things. They're saying, you're barren and you bear not. So that tells me there's a barrenness where you can bear. That tells me that this barrenness that, that, that Samson's mother is experiencing is a divine barrenness because God is about to change it around. Yes. And, and the question and the thoughts I have were things like this, like, could I be willing to go through a season of not having so God can use me that others would have? Yeah. I can't get lost in my barren state because if I believe that that barren state is divinely appointed, I won't be barren forever. Yeah. Ah, not only that, God's going to cause me to experience a fruitfulness to bring about a turnaround yeah. situation. Yeah. And so any time that you feel like I don't have, I can't do, hold on, yeah. hold on. Yeah. You got to take, when you go home, you think about your situation, you got to take that glass and say, my God, look at my empty. Yeah. Oh, God, what are you up to? God, are you about to ship my season? God, you trust me? You trust me to take away? You, you trust me that I would experience this season of emptiness? of being without, oh God, you're some type of God. Oh, yeah. See, when you have that type of relationship yeah. with God, you understand that God trusts you. Yeah. God, you trust me like that yeah. to take me through? Oh, yeah. And you begin to celebrate. Watch this. Catch this, church. Yeah. And your celebration yeah. is what brings about conception. Yeah. Can you celebrate in emptiness yeah. so that you can conceive to bring forth yeah. what you must bring forth? Yeah. God is serious. Yes. Let's, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. So, empty, empty. As the people of Israel finally reached their empty place, and to stage left this family. Point to note. They are, I loved this. They are called a family, even though at this point there's only a husband and wife. <laughs> Two things. Two points. You are a family if you're a husband and wife. One. Also, God speaks prophetically to your current state to tell you what shall be in your future state. Either way is right because it's God. Sometimes we look at our family and we shake our head. I know I do. I'm going to be the first to confess. I say, genetically, oh my. But then I, I have to keep because I'm a woman of faith. I am. I am. Your children test you. I am. <laughs> and I say, yes, sir. You know, I, I speak to myself. I say, I am. That's why I like this. I know who I am. My mama likes this song. You can't have church, but you hear it no boy. Listen. I trust God in my empty. Because I know I conceived them full of potential. We gotta, we gotta trust God. Don't give up, Mama and Daddy. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> I know you want to put them in time out. No, no, don't do that. Take yourself in time out. <laughs> so listen, God, God chooses who 
he will. That's another thing that messes me up. I would, I would choose people that clean, you know, people, you know, you gotta, okay, go through something, but let's not be so much drama. I know God used to drama people. God, you, God, God, God creates drama of people. And he uses them anyway. Yeah. Somebody ought to be glad about that yeah. because you know that you're a piece of work. And you are a piece of work. <laughs> Amen. So look, 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 look. God, God will use his family because they know emptiness. They would surely be grateful to move from a place of emptiness. God loves when he helps you and you are thankful. Come on. And listen, you are not thankful for a short season, but you are forever thankful for what God has done. See, that's the type of Christian. You know, some people are like, okay, I like that phrase. Many are not going to appreciate it. Some people are like seven-day thankfulness. On the seventh day, when they come to church on Sunday, every seven days they're thankful. Then the other days of the week, the whatever. Now, listen. Some see the glass empty, never to be filled, and therefore they're hopeless. Some look at the empty glass, empty situation, and refuse to move by faith in that there will be a better day. Some look at the empty glass and they see no future. Yet God chooses an empty vessel in an empty family to bring about hope for his people. See? So my question is, can God empty you in order to use you for his glory? He, she was barren, barren, barren comes from the word car, which means sterile. I'm going to have some fun right here. I tell you, yeah, everybody looks awake. I couldn't even say wake up. Everybody looks awake. <laughs> he, she is barren, a car, sterile. That's one of the definitions, sterile. I'm going to say it again because some people are going to get it the, the third time before I go into it. She is barren, a, a car, sterile. Okay, watch it now. Sterile. Or I'll say it's sterile. Okay, sterile. Which one? It's whichever one I want. Sterile. <laughs> I, loved, I loved that word when I read it, sterile. Uh, when I think of something that is sterile. I think of something that is empty, and watch this, watch this. I think of a place that is clean, yeah. disinfected, yeah. germ-free, yeah. and intercepted, yeah. and ready for inspection and use. Yeah. Lord have mercy. You think of an operating room. You can go in the operating room and see cockroaches <laughs> and dirt. <laughs> Y'all listen, the body, operating room, the body is about to be opened. Yeah to an atmosphere, and whatever's in that atmosphere, there is the potential that that germ could come into the body. So the surgeons and the doctor and the hospital mandates that it's a sterile atmosphere, that, 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 that if we're going to take you, patient, going on the surgery here, if we're going to take you from your current place to a better state, you've got to come into a sterile place. The church of the living God. Yeah. It's time for us to become barren. Uh, a car, yeah. sterile, yeah. that people can come into the house of God yeah. in whatever state they're in. Yeah. Go under the divine, divine scapel of the Holy Ghost. Be cut open by the word of God and receive divine healing and come out clean, come out better, come out wiser, come out stronger, come out ready to worship, ready to serve, ready to live, ready to testify, ready to fight the good fight of faith, ready to be a child of God. Sterile. If you've never been barren, you're not sterile enough. If you're ever full of you, you're not sterile. So huh? Look, 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 look. I put it to you that God had held this womb of this wife sterile. She was saying, I'm empty. 
God was saying, you're clean, girl. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Disinfected. It was disinfected so that it would be ready for use for such a time as this. Come on. The child that was to be fertilized in her womb would have certain characteristics from or through its genealogy. The father was a Danite, a Danite. The tribe of Dan was the tribe of chiefs and judges. They were the ones that others could go to for advice and counsel. You ought not go to people that are full of themselves for advice and counsel because they will get you hooked on them. When I counsel, I, I got to be empty of me. Holy Ghost, help me here. Hence, after 40 years, God prepares a sterilized womb to bring forth a sterilized son to give sterilized wisdom to God's people. <laughs> Samson's father is from Zorah. Watch this. Zorah means hornet. Hornet. Ow. All right. A hornet brings to mind a hive of busy bees. Sounds good. After all, their honey provides nourishment for the body. But wouldn't you know it, that what God meant for good, that the devil would aim to make it evil. For it would be the honey from the bees and the carcass of the lion that will begin to make a strong man weak. Huh? Whatever God has for you, I promise you, there's a counterfeit waiting for you from the devil. So that what should be good for you becomes bad and evil to you. That's why you got to be Holy Ghost filled. You got to discern. And if you can't discern, bring him my way. I'll discern. Bring her, him my way. I'll discern for you. Church, it's not that God's plan is faulty. No. It is that God's plan for mankind will be dependent upon men who are obedient. You know when church people fail, sin, miss it? That's not God. That's humanity. See, that's what wrong with the church. That's what's wrong with the church people. Ain't nothing wrong with God. You can't get up to heaven and say to God, well, God, you know, <laughs> you put that pastor in charge of me, and, you know, I'm seeing that pastor on the box, and they weren't handing out Bibles. They were receiving something else. <laughs> you cannot get in God's heaven, stand before God and say, God, I came every Sunday, and, you know, the pastor, I knew that she, you know, she was just having a little fling with one of the sisters in the church, so I figured it was all right for me. You think God going to justify your sin because it's happening in the church? Yes. You better know God for yourself. Yes. You better study to show yourself approved unto God. Yes. These days, you'll be hard. it's hard to find a church of holiness today. Right. Plenty of churches of holy, but we got to be holy. Yes. All right, God chooses this family because they are empty of legacy but full of potential. Yes. Empty of legacy, no child, but full of potential. Let me read 4 and 5. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. He shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. God is amazing. This barren couple were barren for a divine season in order that they will bring forth a divine destiny. This child would represent past, present, and future. One child, past, present, and future. The child born would be a present answer to a past problem because the people were in bondage to a foreign power, God would have to come forth a powerful man to bring about a powerful change. Don't miss this, church. Samson was to be powerful physically and powerful in wisdom. I said he is from the tribe of Dan. Judges, chiefs, ain't no dummy. Born in the right family, right characteristics, no dummy. Right? Hmm. 
Yet, church, you and I cannot experience the rescue of God, the redemption of God, and the restoration of God without following the restrictive orders of God. Right there. You're strong, Samson. You got wisdom, Samson. Your parents have got wisdom, Samson. Everybody operating in wisdom. But when you get out, you don't tiptoe through the two. Listen, I'm wise. I can do anything I want. No, no, no. Wisdom means there are rules. Yeah. <laughs> wisdom means that if you want to walk in divine destiny, yeah. you, you don't even have a choice. Now, you do have a choice. But I said, if you want to walk in divine wisdom, yeah. you don't have a choice. If you want to walk in your own wisdom, you got a choice every second, every minute of the day. But if you want to walk in the pathways that God has established for your life, and then there are rules. And that takes me to my point three, a season of formula years. Formula. We don't like rules, but they exist. You know, I can go back. Infants one. Miss Harford. You know, we had the square. They were absolutely square. I noted that. Square and a rectangle, they were square. Square pieces of carpet. And at 11 a.m., all we children had to put down our carpet and had to sit with our legs crossed and watch Sesame Street. <laughs> I've never forgotten that. I've never forgotten that. There was order. Yeah. You know, Paul, I ain't going to say his last name. I'll never forget it. Infants one. Paul always all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Paul, you're going to have a detention. Paul, sit down. You know, he's a thick little fellow, you know, Paul. Well, I know he was thick even back then. He was. He was thick. <laughs> you know, we're saying our timetable. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. Two times four is eight. Two times five. Paul, where's Paul? Paul. <laughs> What, what? From the beginning, it's about order. I knew. Paul, Paul actually, let me tell you about Paul, just a little something. I figured it out later years. I was young and I was a thinker then, so I'd be like, man, this Paul guy, this Paul. You know, you're drinking your milk. You get your white milk. Paul going to spill the milk. <laughs> But what had happened was, I was in Miss Harford's class with Paul and the rest. I remember Paul, as obviously. And I noted <laughs> that Miss Critchler's class, they didn't have Paul in that class. <laughs> and it took me a minute. Now, this is the way I said it. I'm saying it because this is how I thought. I said, I'm in the dumb class. It's Five. So I began to think in my little mind, I said, I'm better than this. I'm better than Paul. Now, at that point, I really couldn't even see the board because I needed glasses for my youth, right? But I memorized well. So I was, I was, I was brilliant then. Handsome, still brilliant, you see? And um, just say amen. amen. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So I said, and Miss Critchler's class was right there. And I said, I need to get out of this class. I did. I said, I need to get out of this class. Because this bit about Paul, you know, you got to eat your sandwich. He going to take the whole cross, put it in the trash. Teacher going to get mad. Now, I'm not going to, my mama going to cut off my cross. So I'm like, well, why don't Paul's mama just cut the cross off? <laughs> my mama cut my cross off. She know, I don't, I don't eat the cross. Don't leave the cross there. That's common sense thing, but I'm in the dumb class. <laughs> so I decided, me and my five-year-old self, I say, yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to become the top student. And see, back in that day, it must have been something because they must have been looking out for if people were ready to go to the brighter class. Because before I knew it, within a month or so, I'm in Miss Critchler's class. <laughs> I was like, I, I, where I belong, <laughs> you know. And I didn't have to deal with Paul no more. <laughs> Recess, I saw him, but no Paul. 
here's my point. If you want to experience an upgrade from where you are, you got to carry yourself in a certain way of obedience to what God tells you to do. If not, you're going to remain in the dumb class. Not today. Everybody passes everywhere. So we graduate. I'm dumb. I'm moving off. I'm moving off. See, what's competition? I remember doing a test. I remember doing one test. I still think I had the right answer. Because you just, to me, some questions are, are based on how you read them. So I read it a certain way, gave my answer. It was the only answer I got wrong. I got 99. But I wanted to explain to the teacher how I got it, because it was really right according to how I thought. But I, I didn't bother. Ms. Critchlow, God bless you, my favorite teacher from Elliott Primary School. Back in the day, so how did I get here? Obedience, <laughs> standards, a formula. Oh, you want to do it your own way? You're going to be in detention. You're going to meet Paul. <laughs> I, t I can tell you, I'm going to, somebody asked me, where is he now? I'm going to try to find him this week. <laughs> He's probably the CEO of a company. <laughs> I will check it out. I'm going to Google his name. I know his own name, too. <laughs> We don't like rules, but they exist. Come on. You're not, you're, you're not supposed to go, oh, rules. We got rules. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Rules. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Give me the rules. Give me the you ain't supposed to like the rules. But they'll make you a whole better person if you abide by the rules. So let me, let me go on here. Look, verse 7. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Wow, that's powerful. Preach on that. That's another time. Here, read, listen to this. Couple, you have a son, but I get a servant. Couple, you get a son, but I get a serious thinker. Couple, you get a son, but I get a current savior of my people. See? I, I think about it sometimes. Parents should think about it. God, you allow me to have this child, but what is this child supposed to be in your kingdom? That's, that's the main thing. All of this is good, and yet such impending blessings come with divine stipulations. And in this case, God is saying that in order for the blessings to flow, you must walk in a place of divine order. In, in, in other words, you are required to have a, hold this up for me, Deacon. You are required to have, this is the word right here. You are required to have a standard. A standard. You can't do what you want to do. You can't do what you feel to do. Because in five years, you're still going to be running around in circles. You might as well live according to God's standard. You don't like it, it don't feel right, but it's God's standard. Because one day, every knee shall bow. And one day, so there's going to be a whole lot of people that are cast into hell because they refuse the standard. We teach and preach the standard so that you can stand before God one day and lay down your crown and say, God, oh, Jesus, oh, thank you for keeping me. Thank you that I, I listened to the standard when I didn't want to hear it. I obeyed the standard when I didn't even agree with it. I didn't agree with everything that my, my pastors told me growing up. But no, I got too much say today. Say? Oh, that weren't the old school days. <laughs> Matter of fact, you were to be seen and not heard. Today they want to be seen, heard, videotaped, picture taken, put it on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, this tube, Google, Facebook. It's a different type of standard today. But God's standard remains the same. And so there it is, standard. That for true deliverance, there must be a standard. To get out of bondage, do you hear me? To get under, out of bondage, to get out of trouble, you have to have a standard. And listen, don't have the standard for Sunday. A lot of people, got, they got standard hats. Then they take the hat off after Sunday and bring shame to the kingdom. So you got to have this standard whether you want to have it or not, whether you like it or not. 
This is the standard. After 40 years, the nation <laughs> gets rescued by a son who has a standard. They, they finally are empty of themselves. You know, they're empty the, of their standard. No, we want to do what they want to do. Why semen on there? Why we got to be strict? You listening to her? You better watch it. You better watch it. You better, I don't care if they're a member or ain't a member. When they come against your shepherd, and you know that your shepherd is living holy, come and have a conversation with me. I live before God. Empty me of me. The people of Israel, they finally reached that place where they emptied themselves of themselves. And God immediately at the same point in time says, standard. Now you want to be, now you want to be free. Now you want to be out of bondage. I'm going to introduce a man that has a standard. Now I didn't say he kept his standard, but you got to stay where the story is. He has a standard. Thank you, Deacon. So let's, let's talk about it. I'm almost done, kind of. Listen, let's look at the standard. The child will be a Nazarite. God will, Lord have mercy, in the sanctified womb. Remember the womb? Yes. Sterile. Yes. Oh! That's why God believes in virginity. Take a seat on that one. Because um, I don't know what's going on in the earth today. You got to try people out. You got two pieces, they're different. They fit, they work. That make it so, it's just so simple. I just see what's so deep about it. Ain't nothing deep, nothing deep. People have been doing it since Adam and Eve. It's really not that genius or deep. People are trying to make a genius and even like no, no. God says, if I am going to be a deliverer, I have to use a place that hasn't been touched. How? That's the issue right there. Let me help some of my young adults, because you've all been touched. You know what I mean by touched. You have to forgive yourself and move on. What else can you do? You can't untouch. You can. I promise you, you can. <laughs> so just forget it. Resurrender yourself and start again. I ain't going to condemn you. I'm like, come on now, let's get with it. We've got work to do. Amen. God uses this sanctified, sterile place, and in that place, he knits together. He, he knits together a Nazarite. Lord have mercy. Huh? <laughs> the training of this child's strength began in the womb. It began in the womb. A sign that the child is special and fit for the task is... No wine or strong drink. Right there. Some people just left, left the building. <laughs> I, I, I know. Lord, have mercy. I know that some want to say, oh, pastor, Bible said. Not they want to get deep with me in the Bible. A little bit of wine for the stomach's sake. But I, I, I want to use my Holy Ghost right here because he'd he be teaching me. That's for the stomach's sake, but for the womb's sake. And somebody see what you put in your stomach go, oh god I think what you put in your stomach gonna go through the intestine come out through your anus and come out through your bladder but what you put in your womb gonna come out in the earth realm as purpose and destiny be less concerned with wine and strong drink let's talk about it some more God said that his standard you there mm-hmm Mm -hmm. His standard and deliverance is no wine or strong drink. <laughs> Not only cannot the child have this wine or strong drink when in the womb, but mama to be, you cannot drink wine or strong drink. Because if you do, the toxins from the liquids will pass through the placenta and enter into the makeup of that child. God needs this child holy unto himself. Oh, come on up in here. No unclean thing must enter the in. The child must be a strict Nazarite, strict in his diet and holy in all his ways. See, that's it right there. Strict and holy. 
strict, a standard, strict and holy. Mm -hmm. Now we've trained our children, hey, do what you feel. God understands your heart. Nobody's telling you your heart is desperately wicked and will, will fool you every time. Heart will fool you. Your heart will convince your mind. Yes. Will call you righteous. <laughs> so, the standard is, there you have it, holiness unto God. That's God's standard. Now, 11 through 14. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spaketh unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now, let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, All of that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine nor strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I have commanded her, let her observe. No choices in this thing. And you see, I feel like it this week. I don't feel like it. You feel good in church? I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. All right. I want to show you something. This is my final bit of insight for today. It's delicious, delicious, delicious. Deacon S. Nene, I need you to have a chair here. Get a chair for you. Y'all, y'all, Mr. Lene. I mean, y'all, Mr. Jamal. <laughs> so, I did that on purpose. <laughs> get a chair for your wife. You get a chair. Out of semen, come down yonder. Got to show you this. Got to show you this. Code is so awesome. Yeah, just sit there. Well, be a little bit separate first from us. This is not official. It's just separate. Right there. Okay. <laughs> no, no. First, the pay attention, church. First, the angel came to the woman. Go ahead. And you're an angel right now for the service. Now, if you had not heard tomorrow, I'm your angel. You're an angel right here. <laughs> So the angel talks to the woman, right? Now, the woman, stay there, angel, gets up and tells the man, an angel talked to me. Go ahead, Deaconess Lene. Says, hey, tells him, an angel talked to me. So the man says, he ain't talking to me. Stand up and say that, boy. Hey! So she takes her seat back and she's been put in her place. Her man said he ain't talk. Right? So the angel comes again and talks to the wife. Says, you're going to have this son and da 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 da. Just say, yeah, wise angel. So the man basically said, look, I need this angel to talk to me. That's right. Yeah. So, so the man prays to God and says, send me that message, please. Let's talk to God. Lord, send me that message. That's right. That's right. That's right. Pause it right here. Pause it right here. Let me help you out. Because I ain't no feminist. I want a man. I want a real man to cover me. Right here, God is correcting what happened with Adam and Eve. With Adam and Eve, Lucifer spoke to the woman, and the man never demanded, who you, who, who, who you been talking to? So right here with a deliverer, God is saying, it's not enough for the woman to hear. She is connected to a man. And before they get together to conceive this child, he must have the evidence and the witness of this work himself. Um, let me help us out here. This is how God works. God don't want women by themselves trying to reproduce things. God wants the woman to submit herself. The angel spoke to her twice. Ain't yeah. spoke to him yet. Yeah. You think that, oh, this is how modern women will go. I'll be it, because I don't want you. They're, they're all independent. God can speak to me. That's that's right. Right. He, he spoke to me twice. He ain't heard from you. What's wrong with you? You need to fast and pray. I'm good. Yeah. But how are you going to get connected and make a love child? Yeah. No, no. You're married, and the order of the kingdom is that she has to submit herself, and God has to correct. If God is going to bring about a deliverer, then he has to correct the mess. 
that started in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, the woman usurped and everything fell because she gave to her husband. You'd be given to your husband. Let him go out and work for the food. I'm trying to help somebody right here, you see. Let him be the man. He's got to be the man provider. He's going to provide sperm to meet the egg. You need egg, can't be telling sperm. Come here, sperm. Come here. No. Matter of fact, I'm a biologist. Let me help somebody else. I wish Dr. Woods was here. She come from the, the, in, in, in reproduction, the egg, when it's released, ovulation, now waits. Come on, I say. Oh, you old shit. The egg waits. The egg sits in the fallopian tubes and waits. Waits. Now, this is really going to help somebody. Waits for a sperm with direction. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Huh? Once a sperm, I'm going to help you some more. It's in my next book coming out. Race for a sperm that has a head and some tail. So it's going somewhere. I can't say, I can't. That's my next book. My next book. I think I'm about to finish it because I'm talking about it. So God now has to reestablish what has gone wrong. So in order to bring about the deliverer, now the angel now goes to the man and says the same thing that he said to the woman. Say something to him, Angel. What, what you said? Make sure it's been listened to my sermon. Hmm? Say it nice and loud. Your wife shall have a child. What kind of child? Hell. Thank you very much. This messenger's on point. And what can he have? Nor any unclean. And no, that double you are no. Who oh, be getting around here with your Chardonnay. Chardonnay! <laughs> <laughs> because now everything is in right authority. Because now that the man has received the message, he now can watch over his wife this time. He ain't going to offer her strong wine. He's not going to offer her anything that's unclean or any wine, strong drink, or anything unclean. This man will now protect his woman. That's what we got to have. Order in the house. Just a, little, just a little something for you. God establishes order in the house. This is way in the future. And then, in spite of Samson's ways and himself, he brings down the house. Yeah. Take your seat, folks. That, that's just a little something, a little something. Just a little something. Yeah, yeah. The man prays to God so that he may speak to the heavenly messenger. God answers his prayer. What is this about? I told you it's about Adam and Eve. Adam never questioned Eve. He saw a food he had never seen before. Trying for you, man. <laughs> Trying to blame the woman. Woman's weaker. Just a more fragile, emotional vessel. That's why you got all these men. I'm seeing plenty of them over the last two weeks. Been in New York, been Boston, looking all more sissified than women. <laughs> you know, how all the nurses in the hospital coming and helping. Coming and helping. Coming and helping. Here comes. Two days ago, thank God, thank God I wasn't there for the, here comes a male nurse. Why you gotta put your hand over like that when you talk? Why? <laughs> Women are not doing that, but no, can I, what? <laughs> he will never cover a woman the way that he's supposed to. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. I'm almost done, I see the end. Cause I scrolled up, I saw the end. I said, Mr. So listen, listen. This right here shows unity, husband and wife, and restoration, and a strength in their relationship. Strength, strength, strength. Don't let nobody, Lene, your nobody come between your marriage. Me, my husband, your marriage. Don't let nobody. I don't care who you still will do. What? Don't let, tell Mike I said hi, Deacon Michael. Nobody come up between your marriage. Tell them waiting. Hey, people, don't let them come in between. Because that's your strength. You know why people come against marriage? Because they see a strength in it. Oh, 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 God. All right, all right, let me get out of here. It was an atmosphere of strength in which Samson would be conceived. Samson's parents would be in sync, in unity, and perfect agreement for this son who would begin a process. God is about to restore Israel. And this is a picture of when a husband takes on responsibility. If man fall for marriages, the women, we, we let the marriages survive because we're just emotional that way. 
You're fighting for the marriage? Yes. It's when the man stops fighting that women get all out of, just out of whack. So my last word here for today, responsibility. The man, the husband, is the head or covering or protector. Protector of his woman. And this is what produces a Samson that will begin a work. He will protect because he came from a home of protection. Understand this, church. God always produces a man or a woman for such a time as this. Who will be strong enough to speak to the current situation of bondage? I will speak to it. This island is in bondage to money. We will do anything to get money. Sell our culture. Sell our history. What our great Grandparents and grandparents, what they believed in, how sacred Sunday was. Look at, look at God and how, you, you, how God is wise. How about that? He said, have that sacred day as family time. Now? What family is doing on a Sunday? Running and doing this and doing nonsense. Nonsense. You must challenge yourself. Can God use me? Can God use you? Can I be a person? Can, can I be a modern day, not no Israelite? We are not Israelites. But can we be a Nazarite in the spiritual sense? Can God look at me and know that he's knitted me for such a time as this? I knew it at five. I said, I'm not knitted to be in the class of Paul. I'm knitted to be in Miss Critchler's class. And I set my face like a flint. And I made sure that before the next month or so, I was in the next class. That girl, Maria's, Maria Russell. Right, bring her up, bring her up, bring her over. In like ways, I believe you're bright enough. Keep it.